It's been 10 days since the last water delivery reached this family in northeast Syria, near the Turkish border. And this is the only way to get any around here. It's expensive, and it's not even clean enough to drink. That's because Turkey has been using water shutoffs as a weapon in an ongoing conflict, according to local Kurdish authorities and NGOs. When these problems really became a crisis uh, was when uh, Turkey invaded the autonomous regions of North and East Syria. We visited families across the region, including at a refugee camp still haunted by ISIS, to understand this little-known water crisis that is making life unbearable. Over a million people in this part of Syria rely on trucks for almost every drop of water they need to drink, bathe, or cook with. It's pumped from wells on the outskirts of this city close to Syria's northern border with Turkey, called Al Hasaka. Local authorities try to send trucks to people's homes once a week. But lately, Abdurrahman Farhan has had to wait up to two weeks. People here survive with very little water, just 40 liters a day. Compare that to the United States, where the average person uses 15 times as much. And even when the water does arrive, Abdurrahman struggles to pay the $3 it costs to fill his tank. Most Syrians live on less than $2 a day. He tried digging a well in his front yard, but it dried up. He and his neighbors collect water from their roofs when they can, but in the summer it hardly ever rains here. Syria has been fighting a civil war for a decade. It started with an uprising against President Bashar al-Assad in 2011. Then came the rise of the ISIS caliphate. In October of 2019, the Trump administration ordered American troops to withdraw from the border, and Turkey invade it. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan said they wanted to create a safe zone for millions of Syrian refugees leaving Turkey. Şu güvenli bölge ilan edildiğinde bu güvenli bölge biz rahatlıkla 1 milyon ila 2 milyon arasında göçmeni mülteciyi yerleştirme şansına sahibiz. But as Turkish troops moved in to secure the area they also attacked local Kurdish forces. Turkey views the Kurdish-led militia here as a threat and has been fighting Kurdish separatists at home since the 1980s. It's a tit-for-tat war. Both sides are going to use every little advantage they can get. And we've seen that over and over again in Syria, whether it's denying food, whether it's bombing each other's, you know, bread plants. Water has been at the center of this struggle. During the attack, Turkey also bombed the region's main water source, the Aluk pumping station. You can see the damage in this video, taken one year after the strike. Local NGOs like the Syrian Red Crescent quickly helped repair the pumps, which are now controlled by Turkey. But al hasakas water department accuses Turkey of regularly cutting off the supply. Turkey has been repeatedly shutting off the water flows for up to a month uh, to this region. In a statement to Insider, the Turkish Defense Ministry blames the Kurds for the water shortages, saying they deliberately reduce or totally cut the power supply to the safe zone, and that Turkey is doing all it can to keep the water flowing. Human Rights Watch says that Turkey is shutting off the water and that they are doing it to pressure local authorities. Turkey wanted more electricity from areas under Kurdish-led control, um, and they would cut the water so as to force Kurdish-led groups to increase electricity. Under the Geneva Conventions, an invading force is responsible for medical care, food, shelter, and water. But NGOs say that is not happening. We know from experience that these kinds of safe zones are actually more of um, traps for civilians than actual safe zones. The water department says the Aluk pumping station is only flowing at 20% of usual levels. 
Locals we spoke to, like Nidal Mohammed, say water deliveries have doubled in price. He's lived in Al Hasaka his entire life. This fountain he built for his children has never seen any water. But the water crisis here isn't entirely new. This region has been struggling actually for decades uh, with uh, getting enough water due to policies of the Turkish government. The majority of Syria's water flows from Turkey, and Turkey has diverted whole river systems that were vital for agriculture, according to local NGOs. In some examples, it was for reservoirs and hydroelectric projects that benefited Turkey. <laughs> Civil war has pushed more and more people into this corner of Syria, so a reliable water supply is vital. This is Al Hul, a refugee camp that is home to about 60,000 people. Many of them are relatives of captured ISIS fighters. Water shortages make it even harder, especially during the pandemic. We heard from so many people that the water that is delivered is usually not safe to drink. It's causing problems with illness, uh, the diseases like uh, diarrhea, uh, chronic diarrhea are spreading uh, and actually killing. And there's a different kind of danger. Water tanks are often far from tents, and women fear for their safety in a place where killings linked to ISIS have continued. Meanwhile, NGOs and locals warn that if Turkey doesn't improve the water supply, the humanitarian crisis here will get even worse.